I'm currently in the Iona House Gallery. Behind me are some wonderful Julie Wilson ceramics. I have just done a podcast style interview with her discussing her work. Enjoy. When was the moment you transitioned into ceramics after having had a successful career in fashion? Fashion went digital and I didn't. Uh, then I had Patrick who, when he was a toddler, uh, there was a pottery group run at the local community college that so everybody else was making bowls and my bowl turned into a cockerel which was the first animal that I made and uh, it started from there and uh, I've never stopped. <laughs> and had you ever worked um, with ceramics before this pottery group? No, when I was at college, um, we were invited into the ceramics department, but it was to throw a pot. How do you start working? Do you start with initial sketches and studies, um, creating a maquette, or do you go straight into creating a finished product? Uh, I go straight into um, the finished piece. It's something that I've always done, even when I was doing fashion, um, I would do my final ideas on my final drawings. Um, I, it's just the way I work. What are your processes from kiln through to glazing? Um, well, that's uh, giving away uh, my secrets, really. They are fired twice, um, but that's about all the information that I can give you, because otherwise people might try and copy. <laughs> well, I'm more intrigued now than ever, Julie. Um, would you say there are any key artists who influence your work? Uh, the main artist that's influenced me is a lady called Tessa Paulin, who lives locally. And she uh, makes the most wonderful bronze animals. Um, things like um, the large horses that you'd see outside of museum. Took me under her wing when I was quite a novice and uh, pointed me in the right direction and I'll be forever grateful to her. Your ceramics vary from exotic to British wildlife. How do you choose which animals you're going to create? Well, they tend to choose me really because it's usually a photograph that I've actually found or somebody's given to me. Usually of an animal doing something interesting that you wouldn't normally capture if you were trying to photograph them, that suggests something that inspires me. I tend to um, concentrate mostly probably on their head. You can make a mistake anywhere else on the body, but if you make a mistake on the head and the eyes in particular, it just will not work. Their characteristic is how it comes out of me because everybody approaches things differently. I'd be interested to know if your pieces are aimed more at domestic house buyers or have you also sold to corporates? I mostly sell pieces to individuals, uh, a lot of whom are men. Men actually collect my work which is quite nice. They like things that are real they don't like an artistic impression of something or something with big googly eyes and i think mine are quite realistic and that's what they like i do a lot of work with the david shepherd wildlife foundation they've used my pieces as prizes for auctions i've also donated pieces for raffles and some of my pieces have been used as prizes for the nfu awards have you ever considered scaling up your work when creating particular animals? I am constrained by the size of my kiln. In fact, the real problem is going smaller simply because of the amount of detail that I like to get into a piece, especially the faces. And eyes get very difficult when you scale down because just a millimetre and it just won't look right. Although people think that a smaller piece is easier to do, it's more difficult. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to Iona House Gallery today, Julie. We absolutely love having your work in our gallery and it's fantastic to hear about your processes. Thank you.